What is up guys, Speed here, and today we're going to be talking about 7 abilities that you are using incorrectly. Last episode, we talked about some ultimates, but you know, ultimates, you only get them at level 6. You can only upgrade them at level 12 and 18, so they're not nearly as important as your everyday spells. So, in today's video, I got 7 spells here today. 7 very, very crucial spells, maybe even some broken spells, who knows. And so yeah, let's talk about why people use them wrong, how you can use them better, and so on. Also, before we move on to the video, I want to let you know about... A little promotion we have going on right now if you like the video uh, it actually makes me slightly happier so consider checking that out all you gotta just click the like button and all right let's get into the video but quickly before we do i do want to announce that we just released the game leap website right so if you guys are looking for new content we just put out this site it's brand new i have not been promoting it for the last two years now if you don't know what it is at this point we put new videos every single day that help you get to the next level i'm not kidding you don't believe me go check it out not reposted youtube videos literally new fresh content right so if you're looking for something oh it's not on youtube it's probably over there so click the link down below sign up today and i hope to see you guys there all right first things first we have sleight of fist so this is embers w recently well not too recently in the last few months maybe it was like six months ago <laughs> Uh, it was changed from a 30 second cooldown at level 1 to about 18 seconds, right? And why was this a big deal? Why was it a big deal that the spell got changed from 30 to 18? Well, what you need to do, and the reason why it's a big deal is a lot of people started maxing it and taking it early on into the lane, and people don't understand why. Why would you take the spell early into the lane? It does pretty mediocre amounts of damage, and it's really bad at securing CS. It does half damage to creeps. Why in the world would you take it in the lane? Why would you do that? Well, the reason why you would do it is because it allows you to dodge auto attacks, disorient opponents, and secure creeps not necessarily last hit them but you can dodge something like an LSA so that you can commit for a range creep and that is the concept you need to understand I have coached a lot of mid lane players and one hero that I've coached quite a bit for whatever reason is Ember and this is something that no one does guys go watch an Ember replay or you can look on screen you know you're probably gonna see some examples sleight of fist allows you to dodge auto attacks and dodge spells also when people are trying to click you right when they're trying to click you what you can do is slide a fist and it literally will just make them misclick often they'll tank a creep wave because they're misclicking and most importantly you can even keep your flank guard alive so let's say you're playing against a shadow fiend and you've managed to close the gap with your flame guard however one raise can break it because you're level two well what you can do is slide a fist dodge and that is the main benefit of slide a fist early on into the lane and i literally see people either not use it at all use it to try to secure cs which is totally viable just very uncommon as it does like minimal amounts of damage and therefore use it to dodge and the last thing i want to say about sleight of fist is when people max it out typically uh, around level seven right you'll have it maxed out depends on the build some people max out flame guard but nonetheless when you have maxed out sleight of fist especially when you do not do not have points in searing chains you need to use it off cooldown are you leaning against the lena with the low hp pool sleight of fist her off cooldown, do not wait 0.5 seconds, do not wait one second after it comes up, use it immediately over and over and over and over and over again. It is one of the best spells at this in the entire game, it is ridiculous how much damage it does, after all, at level 6, it gives you a bonus 160 hero damage at max, right? It's a 6 second cooldown, you are doing an absurd amount of damage, it's like 200 per every single side of fist, and against low armor heroes, it shreds them, so spam it. Alright, next up. The second ability that people use wrong is Treants. So Nature's Prophet Treants. Honestly, there's so many things I could say, guys, right? There are so many things I could say about Treants. It is insane. This is arguably one of the hardest spells to use in the game. A lot of people might say, why? You just control and click them on people. Well, that's why most people are terrible with Treants. Because really, what you want to do with them early on into the game is you want to use them to deny. And you have to specifically be able to line them up with your auto attack and each other, right? You don't want the treants to hit at different times. You want to line up your auto attack, the profit, and the treants at the same time to burst the creep. When you line it up, you can hit creeps for 100 damage at level 1, especially if you have a blightstone. It's even more than that. And then boom, 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 boom. Deny, 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 deny. You've won the lane. Also, second thing about treants, body blocking. I, I think I made a video on this maybe on the Game Leap website in the past, but basically... You want to move them from side to side to block people. 
If you are going for a kill and it is a guaranteed good trade, keep that in mind, guaranteed good trade, right? Maybe there's a CM who overextended and, you know, now she has to run away, right? Then you want to body block her. You don't want to hit her with the treants. People get this wrong, right? They body block when they need to hit and they hit when they need to body block. If it is a guaranteed one trade, body block. If the person is going to run at you or it is a 50-50, hit them, right? That's the difference. And finally, the last thing I want to say about treants is you can use them for vision in the mid game. Use them for vision. It's actually, it's something I don't do that well either. I'm going to be honest, guys. It's something even after over 300 games of profit, I struggle to do consistently. But what you can do is spawn treants in the mid to late game, especially late game when, you know, vision is tough to get up. You just split them up and send them all over the map. Send one top, send one into their jungle, send one down mid, send one to their throne. Uh, just run them around. And what happens? You have vision of the entire map and no one does it. It's really good. All right, coming in at number three, we have the Gamely Premium Sub. So the reason why people use this spell wrong is they actually don't have it in the first place, right? What they don't realize is that uh, they need to sign up today rather than uh, in a year or never. Those are bad options. That's going to hold you back. If you don't do it right now, if you don't fix your spell usage of the Gamely Premium Sub, uh, you're going to struggle. But now let's get into the actual number three, uh, which is Pounce. So Slark Pounce is tough. I've talked about it in a lot of Slark videos. But I want to reiterate it here. Pounce is one of those abilities that at first glance is just used to get on top of people. After all, it leashes them, right? Surely that's that's how you use Pounce. But it also has a defensive aspect, which I would say a lot of people acknowledge. You know, you, you can get away from certain abilities. But the hardest part about Pounce and the reason why people use it wrong. And honestly, it's almost impossible for me to perfectly explain how to use a spell uh, as it, you know, it changes from situation to situation. But the biggest incorrect usage I see of Pounce is people will use it on a character that is already stunned, or they will use it early into the fight when they're a low HP hero. So let's say it is 12 minutes in, you see a CM, you go on the CM, but there's a bunch of heroes around you. A lot of players, especially low MMR Slarks that I've watched, they pounce in, they'll commit the pounce. They're like, oh, I need to kill the CM. What happens? Well, their Q ends and they die. Even if you have your ulti in early into the game, it's not going to save you a lot of the time, right? And therefore you need the pounce. And so basically, all I'm saying is people overcommit. Try to use it only if you have to, or if you have to lock down an ember, right? That makes a lot of sense. If an ember is going to get away or commit sleight of fist to, you know, mess with you or remnant out, then you get pounce to prevent all these things. And, you know, th that's an okay usage of pounce aggressively early on. But until you build up a lot of stacks or have, you know, your tanky items, whether or not it's a Sanjin Yasha or an Echo Saber or a BKB or a Scotty or an Ags or a Manta, I don't care what it is. Be careful with your pounce. A lot of people overcommit with it. All right, next up on the list, we have the Plague Wards. So, why do people use Venno Plague Wards wrong? Well, okay, I'll stay, guys, I'll stay on a serious note, all right? I won't tell you to jungle, all right? I'm not going to say, oh, you know, people use it in lane when they should be jungling. Ha ha ha. I'm not going to say that. However, what people do do wrong with Plague Wards is, number one, they don't spam them. I had to coach someone recently on Venno, and they just didn't spam Plague Wards. It was as simple as that. It's a five second cooldown, a 20 mana apiece, and they didn't spam it. Why max out the spell? Everyone maxes out Plague Words after all. Well, not everyone, but the large majority of games. And they don't spam it. Now you might be saying, well, what if I don't need it to farm anything? What if I, I want to save it? Save it for what? Use it to get vision. That is literally the reason why if you go back in time, you can find games where Zai has gone bots Aether Lens on Venno. A lot of people might say, why? Well, it's to literally run around and put down deep Plague Words just to scout out fights. I am not kidding. I'm literally not kidding. Venos do that. And you can do that with any Venno build and it's very good. And then the second thing you want to do with Venno is you actually want to head off to the jungle and you want to jungle up the jungle. If you guys didn't know, you can actually be level seven or level eight super early into the game, like ridiculously early into the game, uh, such as 10 minutes in, it, it's crazy. So go try that out. Next up, we have Spark Wraith for Arc Warden. This one's kind of tough. It's just like, once again, one of those spammable spells that has a lot of options, right? You, you can kind of just do anything with Spark Wraiths, right? You can provide vision, you can do damage, you can zone people out. And that's kind of what I want to say. When I say people use it wrong in this example, it's not necessarily that they cast it completely wrong. They just don't understand all of their options. So actually, yeah, you do cast it wrong. What am I saying? You cast it wrong. A lot of people, they'll put it down uh, in the lane very infrequently. If you watch High Momar Arc Wardens, what they'll do is constantly, guys, and I mean constantly, put it down to zone people off the lane. Did the enemy have to go eat a tango in the mid lane and they have to back off the creep wave? You can prevent them from re-entering the creep wave, approaching the creep wave, by putting a spark wraith between them and the range creep. Then they get stuck. Also, what you can do is use it to secure creeps, or you can just simply use it on someone to do damage to them. It has a lot of options in the lane, and really the main thing I can say here is use it more. A lot of people just kind of don't know what to do. Use it to zone people. Use it to secure range creeps. It has a lot of usages. Just scout things out. 
talking about scouting things out, if you were playing Arc Warden and you were pushing a tower, what you want to do is set up spark rates, sort of like maybe an Undying would put down a tombstone when you're pushing a tower, right? You want to break the trees, you want to see what's going on, or a Timber, or a Leshrac stun, or a Lina stun, that sort of deal, right? You want to break the trees, see if they're TPing in. And so, if you're playing Arc Warden, do the same thing with spark rates. It's really beneficial considering you can die very easily. Coming in at number six, we have Quop's Dagger. Yeah, Quop's Dagger. Now, a lot of people might say, uh, speed, surely you just cast it whenever you can, right? Well, yes, but we have to define what is can, right? When you say you cast it whenever you can, well, you know, when can you? Because technically you could just, you know, cast a spell on them and dive their tower and get a dagger off or walk through their creep wave. And that's actually what most people do. They walk through the creep wave, right? So this is the biggest issue I see with Quap Daggers, and I teach a lot of my mid lane students to punish it, especially if you're playing against Quap guys, this can help you out. A lot of Quaps at level one, they're like, oh, I need to get a dagger off. That's what Quap does. I'll just walk through the creep wave. And so if you can get a good block against Quap and you see her walk into your creep wave in order to dagger you, auto attack her. Level one dagger is not even good. It's not even good. Right, guys? It's not even good. It's legitimately a mediocre spell. One tango and you can completely ignore it. Completely. So make sure you take the time when Quap is overextending in order to get off auto attacks. Now, from the perspective of the Quap, what do you want to do? Wait till the opponent is distracted with the CS. Maybe you can pull creep aggro first, right? Pull a little bit creep aggro, get the lane back, then go for a dagger when they overextend. These type of things. Do not walk through an entire creep wave just to dagger someone unless, let's say you hit level 3 before they do and you want to, you know, push that advantage. That can make sense. Why? Because dagger becomes stronger and stronger and stronger as the lane goes on. It scales particularly well, especially at level 3, and then it begins to make sense. But a lot of people commit too hard too early. And finally, last but not least, we have any of Oracle's spells. Literally any of Oracle's spells. Absolutely, just pick one and people use it wrong. The root, oh, well, it's also a purge. You can dispel things, you can dispel empower, dispel bloodlust, dispel DDs, dispel haze, dispel, you can dispel daggers in your lane. You can literally dispel Jingu Mastery from a Monkey King. Also, a cool one is you can dispel Elder Titan's Spark Wraith. So just keep that in mind, guys. If you happen to play against that broken hero, save your purge, purge him off. The W, yeah, I mean, this one is brutally hard to use. It really is. I would say the most underlooked value of this spell is early game and disarm. So in the early game, I think people just kind of forget that they have a heal, you know? You can heal an Oracle and for whatever reason, people just don't heal. It's totally okay to use the W and the, the E in the early game, guys. Like. Just as a heads up, it's totally fine, right? Totally fine. And then the second one is the disarm, right? So let's say there's a Sven or a PA or a Slark running at you. It's no problem at all to disarm them and make sure that you can play the game. You don't die instantly. And last but not least, we have the E. This one's weird. The only thing I'll say about it is I wouldn't say people necessarily use it wrong. Occasionally, they'll kill themselves. I recently played against an Oracle who had a tower shot flying at him and managed to E himself before the tower shot connected and therefore he died. But, you know, just keep in mind that you can use it to deny creeps. It's a bit of a weird one, but because it drops creeps low, if you actually have a maxed out E on Oracle, you can E your range creep and deny it. It's fairly useful. It can pull the lane back, especially let's say you're farming mid. You can even do the same thing with level 2, level 3 E. You don't even have to do it on the range creep. You can obviously do it on the melee creeps as well. And so yeah, just keep it in mind. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I want you to say in the comment section down below which other spells people use wrong. Which one should I talk about? Which one should I educate? the people about. I'd love to hear all of your beautiful opinions on it, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dodo or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me, but I recommend you sign up to GameLeap.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there, and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes. They skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.